mum guilt in a state agency. Today I'm joined by Natalie Barton who is digital officer for Property Mark. Talk to me about mum guilt. So Chris, I am a mum and surprisingly I've actually got four children. Four? Four. So I went for a two for one deal. First of all, I had twins when I was very young and my career has been navigated because I had children. I then had another two <laughs> um, for better, for better, not worse. Um, and again, I've, I've navigated a path because somebody has, you can't just abandon your children. They have to be looked after and cared for. But what I've learned is that a lot of energy can be wasted on feeling guilty as a mum because you can't be everywhere at once and you're, so much is expected of you. Because like, let's be honest, I wouldn't ask you if you were a male if you had dad guilt. No, no. Because let's be honest, men only think about two things, beer and uh, cheap beer. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't talked to my husband, it's cinema and football. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but in all seriousness, Let's look at it from the male point of view mm -hmm. to start with and then we'll come back to the way you've sorted it in your head and there might be a bit of crossover mm -hmm. but but for all the dads watching out there what what can they do to help their 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 wives and partners not suffer from this mum guilt? Have conversations but not... Talk? Bloody hell. Oh I know it's all oh, icky <laughs> but genuinely have a conversation because there's a lot of smooth gliding through the working day the other day from getting the kids up to getting them to bed and sitting down of an evening there's a flurry of underneath stuff mm -hmm. of the mental load that women carry that dads don't necessarily get automatically included in one because why would you want to double that workload if you sometimes catch you're only going to correct it anyway <laughs> Sometimes I mean, it's a bit like when I put when I put the stuff in the washing machine, I get told off for doing it wrong, and then when I pick it out on the line, I get told off for doing it wrong. I know there is as 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 women as well, we have to like let go of control a little bit sometimes. I think I I've had the point. I remember my daughter was in a dancing show. I was really busy because I was working as well. I had a thing on in the evening where some, my husband had to go in to a very strange atmosphere of a dressing room. But she was performing again the next night, so I needed things very specifically. And so I was there with stickers on everything. Put this here, do this here, do it, do it right. And I realised after that actually he could have just found the way. Or we had, a we had an argument once at the top of an escalator at King's Cross because we were on a family day trip and he didn't know how to fold the buggy up. We'd had the buggy for four years, Chris, and he hadn't worked out how the catch worked because I'd always done it. It was, and he'd not thought until that moment when he needed to, he hadn't thought that I'll, I'll, I'll explore that. Yeah, but men don't think that way. Oh, they don't. And we... It's here and now. We are very guilty of just, well, I'll suck it up, I'll absorb it, because it's easier to take it than to have those conversations. So the first thing to do is to have the conversations, not how can I help? And because, do it be, and do it whilst things aren't heated. Yes, yes, yes. So share what's going on, who's where, when, who's covering this. This is. I mean, I've been married for nearly twenty years, and it's only the past few years since I've got involved with property market. I'm on the road more. Both me and my husband mostly work from home. So why do the phone calls come from the school straight to my phone, not him? I've had call I was like hello that was your son isn't feeling very well can you come and pick him up well no I'm on the train to London can you call my husband please and get him to do it and then it turned out they didn't call him they decided actually my son didn't need picking up that badly after all so it, it falls on us as mums and then we're meant to be the ones who feel guilty because we can't juggle it all when the schools aren't helping us it must be hard you know you've got to be a wife and, and you've got to be a mum and also you're going to be a daughter as well, aren't you? Yes. And, and you've got guilt with that you're not, you know, when we get to our sort of age, you've got elderly parents and you're spinning those sort I of things. I live with, well, my dad lives with us as well. So we are a multi-generational house and he's the best. He's, he's more of a husband than my husband's husband. He will, he, he will do the school runs so that I can be at work 
and and really help out. So it's 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 sharing that whole mental load. So talking is one thing. What yes. else? I think I think for dads they shouldn't assume they need to look at the bigger picture. What actually is happening? And not ask for a list. Not ask for. You know, how can I help? Oh, I'm babysitting the children. Hold on a second. Oh, hold on a second. Uh, I've emptied the dishwasher. Give me yeah, a medal. <laughs> <laughs> or I, yes, or oh well, something that doesn't even need doing, but they still want a medal, and there's like a hundred different chores that do need doing. There's kids need picking up from school, but well done, you've cleared the gutter. Can I give a piece of advice to uh, to, to the ladies watching this? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I read this in a book. Is that um. My wife is very guilty of saying the words, can you do this? And the problem is that that is a challenge to a man asking, oh, okay. can you do it? Like, like can you do this or not? <laughs> so, but men, men want to feel wanted and needed. Uh, it's just biological rubbish upstairs in the head. So therefore, if you reframe it and saying, will you, will you? Okay, there's a tip Ooh. for you. Shall I try that later? Will you, will you cook tea tonight? No, not yet. I mean that. Do not use the... So now, because uh, I haven't been able to train my wife to do this, is that I actually have him... When, it, when she says, can you, can you, you know, can mm -hmm. you, can you do the... Can you cook... Can you uh, clean the bathroom floor? I, as a man, you'll see that. Can you, can you clean the... You know, can you? Can, can you I? Not? And can I do it? Will you? you? Oh, I want to feel wanted. Yes, I will. <laughs> yes, I will. It's a big one. Wow. Try it. I'll try that it, one. It does work. As a male, we want to try and sort our woman's problems out. Oh, yeah, that's a big I know thing, that's a nice, I know, but I mean, we might as well talk about this whilst we're here. But it is true, though, isn't it? Yeah. I, I'm go guilty of it. Go with the problem and go, you just, just to, want to vent and go, oh, my God. Because ah. I'll then, say, right, then, I'll get online again. We'll get this, this, this. <laughs> yeah, and then you say, I just wanted to rant. I didn't want a solution. Actually, it's all, it's all good. I just need an emotional venting but would that help would that help with the mum guilt from men um sometimes with the mum guilt though you do want a practical for, for them to recognize that there's an issue that you're carrying so much do you think there's a responsibility on the ladies to actually you almost say to almost say i want to vent as opposed to i want a solution or, or actually yes yeah, say what you want out of this conversation like for example we've got an issue with X, Y, and Z, how are we going to resolve? Sometimes it is a practical resolution. Yeah. I had an issue with... Yeah, but you wouldn't say that to your other half. You'd vent, you'd vent <laughs> off. Yeah, I mean, we had property mark one. I was go property mark one, going down, speaking, staying the night before in London, staying the night after in London. All good. My husband books the Euros. He's off in Germany over the same week. I'm like, brilliant. My dad's working. My older daughter who also lives with us, she's working. I'm like, I don't know how this... There's no solution here. Ha help. So, and then you need a big, a big practical conversation of who can step in. Da, da, da. Who's covering this bit? Because why should it automatically fall? It does automatically fall. Because, so we've talked about how men can, can help their women in the relationship with regard to mum guilt. What, what can women do differently? explain how much they are carrying because a lot of it is in our heads if we're sat down we're thinking right okay so tomorrow they've got swimming so I need to get the swimming certificate have I signed that letter have I got x y and z ready have I done the packed lunch for tomorrow is the washing clean have I got enough socks to carry on the rest of the week because I'm at work tomorrow so I'm not going to have time to do the laundry um what are we having for tea what's for breakfast is have we got the cereal have I been to Sainsbury's have I got all of this even if I send my husband to, if he goes to do cook the tea he will get the ingredients to cook with but he won't look at whether we've got sugar or washing powder or anything like that but I shouldn't have to give him a list to say we need washing powder because that's another job on my list that I don't need to do so I think we need to say all this stuff is running through my head why don't you take care of this bit will you take care of this will, bit? You? will you take care of this bit and I will take care I of this or bit. even stronger I I need you to do this for for <laughs> yeah, me yeah yeah so we That's need, a big one, isn't we it? We need to show how much we're carrying, how hard it is sometimes, the impact it has on, okay. say, for example, so automatically, because I had children, I have picked my career. I said I fell into agency because it fitted in with 
childcare hours and things like that, things that I needed. And I negotiated my roles so I could do the school runs and I could be there. My son's got autism, so I've never worked full time. So I've got chance to go to appointments when they crop up, chance for school appointments, chances to do the paperwork that's involved in that as well. So my career hasn't necessarily followed the trajectory compared with my sister who's got no children and who has just been able to hyper-focus, I want to do this, that's what I'm going to do. So it's very, it becomes an impact and then that escalates, that becomes a spiral because you work part-time, you get paid less, you have less income, whereas my husband's like, well, I'll just keep on working and they'll reward me with promotions, higher positions, but then I'm less available. And so you've got this path that just divides and it's sometimes a case of come back it how do we even this up yeah i read a fantastic book men are from mars and women from venus mm -hmm. and one thing that that blew my mind was let's just say a man earns nice round figures 50 grand a year in men's eyes that's fifty thousand points mm -hmm. and taking the washing out of the line is one point yeah Okay, in men's eyes, but in ladies' eyes, earning the money is one point and taking the washing out is one point and put, filling the dishwasher is another point. Mm -hmm. And I, that, that changed my relationship with my wife. Yeah. That, that sometimes you have to do, because I'm very guilty. Right, I'm going to get all the work done and I'll do the, do the, do, do the, do the jobs. There. Now what I've learned is if we do all the jobs, I won't get moaned at. <laughs> <laughs> um, final thing on this is... is um, with plenty of ladies that have sat on this sofa mm -hmm. is the um the per the perception of other mums the guilt of, of mm. look you know that are other mums doing okay when in reality you know i don't want to you know the proverbial school gate yeah and look at not looking like you're keeping it together oh there is a huge huge level of veneer of I'm doing fine, especially via social media, through Instagram. Even the mums who are on there who have an account that is very much based on, oh my God, isn't it hard being a mum? But they've still got the glossy homes and everything's in order and everything's fine and they've got the hair and oh, da da. And you're like, okay, actually. But then you, you know that behind the scenes, actually they've just cleared a little bit out. And over here, there's an absolute stack of laundry, but they're doing this over here. So you've got to kind of put it into a context of the bigger picture. One of the things having my son with autism was that the parenting handbook went out the window. I was no longer aspiring to this Being the golden juggling, just, oh, I can do everything. I can have everything because my son was not playing by the script. He was in school. I mean, school was a nightmare. So they put him on reduced. Oh, that was another challenge. The school broke the law by putting him on part time hours. So again, you've then got, well, I know school's not a childcare facility, but at the same time, he's, he, yeah, he's in a complex needs situation now. He's in a setting and he's thriving. So it's gone a whole lot better from a very hard struggle because it's not just personal relationships that are impacted by the demands. It's schools are guilty of loading onto mums. Employers aren't always as flexible as possible. I know people have left the industry because they can't do the school run and be in the office for meetings and we're losing good people. So there's a whole complex network. We've, we've got flexible it's flexibility, but people aren't necessarily using it. And I think we all need to, rather than load the guilt onto mums, we need to sort of look at the different roles different providers play. Thank you for your time today. Natalie. You're very welcome. Thank you, Chris.